Hey, Pastor Carl here. Thank you so much for joining us online. We pray that you are refreshed and encouraged as we dive into God's Word together today. It's great to have you here with us. And if you need a Bible this morning, if you could just raise your hand and our ushers will get one to you. And while they're doing that, I have a question for all of us uh, that, um, well, I, I got some interesting reactions when I asked a little bit earlier, but uh, how have you blown it this week? Now, that's a question to start with, right? How have you blown it this week? You know, maybe you were trying to hold in your frustration, but that person went one comment too far, and your temper got the best of you. Or maybe it was you were simply checking the weather, and that was your intention, but then you started clicking from one site to the next site, and pretty soon your eyes are staring intently at those at those that those people, those individuals who are creating the God's image, and yet through some company, through some process, they've been made into an image that it just means to provoke and stir up. Oh, well, there's any number of things we could list that where you and I could say, yeah, I, I blew that this week. We face those tests, we face those trials, we face those temptations that with the best of intentions we try to stand up against and press through. And, and many times probably we're successful, but then there are those other times when we collapse in the moment when our guard is down, maybe we're tired, uh, maybe we just feel we deserve a break, you know, we've been working real hard and and just want some sense of satisfaction. And then after we cave, after we give in, we feel the burden and the weight. We, we feel defeated and have that overwhelming sense of shame. That may sound like a heavy way to start a message, but it is real life, isn't it? And the fact is that the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ, deals with real life. Our vision at Community Church is that we would follow Jesus together. And so to that end, we're exploring his life as we continue in our series, Luke, a documentary. And we're going to witness an incredible truth for those moments when we wonder how we're supposed to follow Jesus when we can't even get it out of our own way. And so that truth is that Jesus' faithfulness and facing temptation gives us hope. Jesus' faithfulness and facing temptation, that when it was there before him, we can have hope. When we find ourselves in those times of temptation, in trial or in testing, because of Jesus' faithfulness in facing the temptation that was put before him. So turn with me to Luke chapter 4. Uh, Luke wrote this gospel to a, to a person he knew, Theophilus. He wants Theophilus to be firmly confident, convicted, fully assured of who Jesus Christ is. And he wants Theophilus to know that Jesus is faithful even when others have fallen short, when they've failed. So we look at Luke chapter 4, starting in verse 1, and we'll read all the way to verse 13. We just have the first verse up there where we read, And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, uh, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, 
It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. On the heels of the baptism of Jesus, the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness where he faces temptations that are laid out before him by the devil. Now, when we read that word temptations, it can mean trials. It can mean uh, also a test. And so when we see that word temptation, this is what we're talking about. Jesus is being tested in this moment. Well, then we see that word devil. And we need to pause for a moment because perhaps when you hear the word devil, or sometimes if I hear the word devil, what comes to mind is more our pop culture picture of what the devil looks like than the word of God. Uh, you know what I mean. The little guy on the shoulder who's whispering and saying, hey, you want to do this, don't you? Come on, you want to do it. It isn't that bad. It doesn't hurt anybody. Whatever, that, that picture there, right? Or the one with a pitchfork and the tail that had that funny end to it and walking around with sharpened teeth or whatever. And, and, and we can laugh at those pictures. But our culture laughs at the very idea of a devil or Satan. But if we engage with God's Word from Genesis to Revelation, the devil, which literally means slanderer, the one who slanders, or accuser, the one who accuses, is not laughable at all. You know, the devil's testing of Jesus, the goal was not simply to have Jesus cross a line. I mean, the devil was not looking to say, uh, okay, let me think of something. Let me try to figure out something, spur the moment to trip Jesus up. No, this was a very specific attack in his accusations concerning uh, Jesus' identity and mission. He was calling into question who Jesus is and what he was about. It was very specific, those challenges that he set out there. And, and maybe, maybe he said it with a sneer. Hey, you know, I saw your family get together at your baptism at the Jordan. It, it looked kind of cute and all. You know, the voice from heaven, the dove coming down. Well, if that is indeed the case, you were following your father's wishes and you were anointed by the Spirit, if you are the Son of God, might have come across that way. Maybe it came across a little bit more gentle. Something like, well, if you are the Son of God, uh, help me to understand this. God in the flesh, setting aside your position of power and authority to come into the muck and mire of humanity, if that truly is the case, then, then this little demonstration is nothing for the one who spoke creation into existence. This is, this is not a big deal. Just, just prove it to be true. Oh, and in the, in the, in the challenges and the tests and the trials that the devil puts out there, he's questioning Jesus' identity, his, his mission, his purpose. And, and if you think about the temptations that maybe you experienced this week, in a very real way, if you, if you pause and you think about it, whether you successfully pressed through it or you succumbed when that person cut you off in traffic and, and verbiage flowed out of your mouth that normally isn't there, but he deserved it. She deserved it. Where did they get their license from? Clearly not the DMV. Or some other frustration or thing that wells up within us. If you look hard, they're, they're tests about our identity, who we are, who we claim to be. 
as, as, as women, as men. And, and for those of us who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ, you know, those trials come, and, it, and it's right there before us, and, and the struggle and the pull is there. What are we going to do? And those moments when we're successful, we feel good, but in those moments where we fail, we feel alone, we feel like we blew it, and we, we just keep on heaping the judgment on ourselves. Well, John Owen was a Puritan theologian back in the 1600s, and uh, one of the things about reading people from back then uh, I really enjoy reading the Puritans um, because they had a way of looking inside the soul. And they had a way of taking a look at what it means to follow after God, and they had a way of identifying sin and kind of cutting it up and doing a post-mortem on it because sin is a dead thing. And Owen was writing about the heart and, the, and sin, and he said this, "'Temptation and occasions put nothing into a man.'" but only draw out what was in him before was in him before you know that is that you know when we face a temptation or a trial the reason it's a temptation or a trial cuz it's a struggle about something going on within us it's something that's happening in our spirits that that are being drawn to the surface well, what Satan, the devil, is trying to do in putting these accusations, they were directed ab- towards Jesus at the, about the incarnation, the fact that God came in the flesh to save his people, that is, to save you and to save me. That was the nature of the temptation that he was throwing in Jesus' face. But what was displayed, what came out of the heart of Jesus was that he was faithful where others failed. You know, there are parallels here. If you think about Adam and Eve, perfect setting, right? Everything going for them. Everything is, is, is right there. It's all for them to enjoy except one tree. And how, how much, well, how much can we relate to that? Hey, you can have all this, but not that. You know, you can have anything in the refrigerator, but don't touch the cookies. They're for later, right? So what do you want? You want the cookies. Now, there might be any, anything else in there that you love, but all of a sudden that becomes the focus. All God had said is, don't mess with the tree. And then there was that question that was posed. Did, did God really say that? You know, do you know what you're missing out on by, by not touching the tree? That, you know, did God kind of hold that back from you? Did he not have your best interest in mind? Or what about the people of Israel? They're coming out of the land of Egypt. And, and in coming out of the land of Egypt, out of the slavery... They're in the wilderness. They have seen powerful, dramatic displays of the power of God time and again. But the bottom line comes. They grumble. They complain. They call into question what God had done. They failed in the wilderness. But what's revealed in Jesus' heart Uh, in this trial that he faced is that Jesus was filled by the Holy Spirit. You take a look here at the passage, and a number of times the Holy Spirit is mentioned. And, And several times Luke references the Holy Spirit and Jesus consciously aligning his steps with God's Spirit leading him. And and as a matter of fact, what we start to see after this is this promise that unlike in the olden in the older times in the olden times when God's spirit might come upon somebody for a season and then be removed 
The promise that Jesus gave to his disciples is that the Holy Spirit was going to be with you always. He was going to be the one at work. You were going to carry around. God was going to uh, be with you always because of the presence of his Spirit. Well, Jesus was filled by the Spirit. And, and what, what became evident in Jesus' trial was that Jesus submitted actively to the call of God, to God's call. He went into the wilderness knowing he was going to be tested. And though the words that, these words were recorded that Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane a couple of years later, a few years later, clearly throughout the Gospel of Luke, we're going to see Jesus living life, following God's call upon his life, not veering to the left or to the right, but keeping right on target. And he said, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. Oh, what we see in the, in the temptation, in the trial, when, when the heat is on, when the questions are being asked and the suggestions are being tossed out there, Jesus was Scripture anchored. When the devil, devil put temptation before him, well, unlike you and I, what, what can we do sometimes? Try to rationalize, trying to wiggle out, we, you know, we debate, when really there's no measure for debating. And Jesus just came back at the devil with Scripture, and he spoke the Word of God. He responded with God's Word. There's so many angles that we can look at the temptation that Jesus endured. But what struck me is that Jesus displayed his humanity. You know, he didn't play the God card. He didn't say, because I am God, therefore. No, he quoted Scripture. He leaned on the Spirit. He kept his eyes focused on doing what God wanted was calling him to do, all displaying the fact that he was one of us. And, and C.S. Lewis, he wrote this book called Mere Christianity. I know I've alluded to it before. For those of you who don't know that book, it's a fantastic book. It's a bit of a challenging read, but it's a fantastic book. C.S. Lewis wrote The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and another of, a number of classics. But in mere Christianity, he's working through the process of uh, thinking through temptation and the power of temptation. And, and, and he had this insight about Jesus and temptation and what Jesus faced. We never find out the strength of the evil impulse inside us until we try to fight it. What he's saying there is, when we try to fight it, that's when we discover how hard it is to fight. And Christ, because he was the only man who never yielded to temptation, is also the only man who knows to the full what temptation means. Jesus knows, and he understands and Jesus is tested, he's tempted, he's found true and faithful, and that is the cause for hope. Our hope, when there are those times when we're struggling and we're wrestling and we're feeling like we're losing, it's the cause for our hope that we don't have to stay there, but God calls us to move to a new place. Oh, we read in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus began his ministry, and he started out and he goes to Nazareth and he reads these verses from the prophet Isaiah in which we read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus came to set people free. And Jesus came to set you and me free. 
He came to set us on a path in which we can follow after him and experience who he has called us to be. Oh, we can talk about strategies for dealing with temptation. For example, the critical role of prayer. You need to pray. When the trials come, the temptations come, the tests come, you need to pray. I need to pray. We need to saturate our, our hearts and our minds with the promises of God's Word. Oh, we need to engage in the life of God's family for, for accountability, to hold each other and, and encourage one another. And, 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 and so accountability and encouragement, and, and there are many other very practical steps, but what we see here in Luke chapter 4, the, the focus of this account is on Jesus. Because that's where it starts. Because if we don't keep our eyes on Jesus, then all these other steps that I just mentioned could be just steps we take to try to better ourselves, you know, self-improvement things. But it's about Jesus. And it's about the promises that he spoke. That his faithfulness in facing temptation gives us hope. That when we're feeling the heat of temptation and our resolve is wearing thin, even then, Jesus said, maybe your resolve is wearing thin. Maybe you feel like you've blown it this week. And as you anticipate this week to come, all you do is you see it as a week full of opportunities to blow it some more. Jesus said, come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus could speak those words of promise because he knows about temptation. He knows about trials. He knows about testing, and he was not found wanting. Indeed, he proved himself to be victorious, and he calls us to victory. Uh, the writer of the book of Hebrews wrote to people undergoing extreme trials and testing, and they were daily facing the temptation to just give up and walk away. You can read about it. If you read through the book of Hebrews, you, you see that pull on that, that was, must have been there that people were wrestling with, that in the midst of their struggles, there were some that had fallen away, and, and the writer is trying to encourage them and challenge them. To these men and women, he, he reflected on the life of Jesus, and he encouraged them with these words. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18, we read this, For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted tempted, who are being tested, who find themselves in the midst of a trial. Jesus is able to help you today. We read a little bit later in Hebrews chapter 4, these words, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, but was without sin. Therefore, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I do not know what trials or temptations or testing you are experiencing, maybe even in this moment. And as you look back over this past week, you think about those times when you blew it. And it's weighing on you right now. It's, it's right there at the cusp, and you're, and you're feeling it in your heart and mind as our worship team comes up to lead us in our Next song of response. I, I want to 
I want to call out to you. If you are feeling weary, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling defeated, if you're feeling put down, Jesus said, I understand, I know, I want to be here with you and for you. I want to walk with you through this and bring you to a point of victory where you experience through my strength, through my grace, through my mercy, a freedom that you never knew before. Where are you today? Are you doing the business today? See, the temptation can be, oh, I'll take care of it tomorrow. But we all know distractions come. Uh, the press of life comes on us. We start looking at our to-do list, and one of those to-dos that drops off is to say, yeah, I'm going through this. Jesus I need you. I need your spirit to encourage me, to strengthen me, to challenge me, to take the steps I know I need to take, to reach out to help, for help from somebody around me. Oh, the promise of God's word is that we can reach out in confidence, knowing that there is grace and mercy in our times of need. Because Jesus was faithful when he faced his temptations. It is hope for us. A sure hope. A promise. Oh, we're going to be singing this song. And, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to speak words of yes, conviction, and challenge. Saying, what is that doing in your life? But he's also there calling you, saying, hey, please, come follow Jesus. Walk in his way. Do the work you know you need to do, because in that you will find forgiveness, you will find freedom, you will find strength, you will find peace. Oh, let me pray for us as we stand together. And I would invite you, after the service is done, we'll sing, we have some announcements, but don't let, don't let your resolve this morning dissipate. But, but in these moments, think about what is God calling you to do? How is he calling you to respond? I'll be available up front if you want to come and talk and pray. Or maybe you just need to talk to the person you came with today. But don't put it off do it today and experience the help that Jesus extends because he was faithful in the face of trials, testing, and temptation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that, that tells us about Jesus and tells us that we are not going through this walk alone. We're not going through this on our own. You didn't say, hey, great, I'm glad you're one of my kids. Good luck. Oh, but in your sweet providence, in your sovereign power, your spirit is at work in the hearts and minds of your people. Oh, draw us to that point where we are determined to take the steps we need to take in our trials, in our testings, in our temptations, that we might glorify you in all things. And Father, maybe there's somebody here that this is a bit uh, new news. I've never heard this before. We're trying to put the pieces of who Jesus is together, and, and it's, it's like trying to assemble a puzzle without the box. Father, by your Spirit, would you pull all those pieces together? Would you answer the questions of the heart? Would you draw that person, that man, that woman to you this morning? And may they take that decisive moment to say, yes, I will follow 
Jesus. Lord, we, we give ourselves to you and pray that you would be glorified in all that we do and all that we say. For we pray in the name of our risen Lord and Savior. And everybody said, Hey, thank you so much for joining us in our podcast today. Uh, If you are looking for ways to partner with us here at Community Church, you can check out our website at community-church.com.